Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to week number 23 of the Stash Buster block series. And our block this week is called Squares and Points and this is um, an eight pointed star. So this one is going to go together really easy and um, I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, we have done several eight-pointed stars lately, um, and they're all, they all go together pretty much the same. You have a center square, you have flying geese units, and then you have your corner squares. There's just um, different ways to do it. You can divide this up into the four patch and put different colors in there. You can put different colors in your background. This one is simple with just the same color for your star points as is the center. So you're just using two colors. So what you're going to need to make this block is you're going to need one four and a half inch square of your star color and then you're going to need eight two and a half inch squares all of the same color and then for your background you need four two and a half inch squares and then you need four two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles. So we're going to go ahead and get started with making the flying geese units and for that we're going to use the the colored two and a half inch squares and then you're going to draw a line from one corner to the next and use a straight edge of some sort I, I just use this template here and you can use any kind of marker that you want I used a pencil because all of my water soluble and air soluble markers have run dry over this quarantine period so I'm um, using a pencil and that works fine because this is going to be a stitching line so you're really not going to see it just make sure you draw on the back side of your fabric so you can do that to all eight pieces and then you're going to take <clears throat> and then you're going to take your white background rectangles and you're going to place those on one side and what you want is for the drawn line to start in the center of your rectangle and go down to the opposite corner and then we're going to stitch along that line so let's go to the sewing machine okay so I'm going to go ahead and chain piece all of these together um, and I'm going to do one side at a time so I'm going to just start at the center and then go down to the corner the right lower corner on this one and just take my next rectangle and square and then line them the same way Okay, now I'm going to clip these all apart and that just makes it easier for me to do the next couple of steps and cut off my threads. So now I need to do some trimming and what I'm going to do is to cut off this section over here leaving a quarter of an inch seam allowance just like that. And what that will give me is the first half of the flying geese unit like that. So I'm going to do that to all four pieces. Just cut that outer corner off. And you can use uh, your rotary cutter if you'd rather do that. And this doesn't have to be exact as far as your seam allowance is concerned. Just I'm just eyeballing a quarter of an inch. Okay, so now what I need to do is to press these open in order to put the next piece on. So I'm going to do that and then um, come back and 
put on the next piece. Okay, now I have all of my flying geese halfway done. So we're going to take the other squares and do the same thing. Line them up on the outside. My diagonal line is going from the center down to the opposite corner. And I'm going to sew these on. all apart and then we're going to trim them just like we did before so I'm going to trim off the outer triangle and do that on all four pieces And then we're going to press those open. Okay, I'm just going to press these pieces open. Just press them the way they're sewn and then flip them back. Okay, now I'm going to lay the block out and I'm going to start with the center and put my flying geese around it and they're all going to put color against color. They're all going to face that direction. So there you see the star and then fill in with the corner blocks which are just the black background color. And there is the star. So now I'm going to sew all of these pieces together in rows and then sew all the rows together. Okay, I'm going to start with the first two pieces of the first row and sew them together. And then I'm going to take the first two pieces of the second row. Now on this one I need to watch my point which is right here. I'm going to use my pencil. Um, here is, well, if you look at the flying geese unit, here is the point right there. And I don't want to cut that off while I'm stitching. So what I want to do is on, I want to be able to see this side. So I can get that a little bit closer. And your stitching lines are going to cross over here. And where they cross, I want to stitch on the seam side of them and not the triangle side. So just, but just like a thread past where those two cross. If you go too far towards your seam, then you have a lot of background showing. And I don't want that. I, I want, um, I want to be right at that point. But if I stitch right through that crossed line, then sometimes it cuts off the point. So it's, it's kind of um, a fine line there. That, and it takes a little practice, but you can do it. So I'm coming up right on my stitching line. There, I just went right over, right above where those two lines cross. Okay, now I'm going to do the first two pieces of the third row. And I've got these flipped um, just so that my 
seam. So that this seam will not flip so I don't have to watch that. So now I'm going to go ahead and lay these back out where they belong on my block layout so I don't get confused and sew the third piece to the wrong side. It's just a safety precaution I've learned to do. Okay, so now I'm going to add the third piece onto each row. So here's the third piece for row one. Third piece for row two, and this is another flying geese unit where I have to watch the point. So I'm going to do the same thing and try and stitch just a thread's width on the seam side of that point. Okay, now the third piece of row three. And I'm going to flip this so the seam is facing me this time because it is facing down. Okay, now I'm going to need to press my rows so I'm going to cut them apart and then I'm going to press them and I'll show you how I'm doing that. Okay, I'm going to lay the rows out and what I want to do is to sew the seams of the rows in opposite directions. So for this row, I want to want the seams to face out. So I'm going to press these out like that. So for the second row, then I want the seams to go in. And the way I decide to do that is um, since there are so many seams coming together here at these points, it's going to want to go this way anyway, so I don't want to fight that. And it usually makes your points on your flying geese look a little bit better if you do that too. So if you can see how those points look nice and crisp, that helps that by the way you press them. And so for this one, I'm going to press these out. Now that will help my seams nest together. Like this. Because they're going in opposite directions. So that will help me sew those together just by butting those seams up to each other. And uh, now I can sew my rows together. Okay, use a quarter inch seam allowance as always. And we're just going to sew rows one and two together. And I'm coming up to a point here on the flying geese, so I want to watch that. And that looks good. row edges up. And I have to raise my presser foot because it's wanting to flip this seam towards me and I don't want it to do that. I want it to lie flat so I have to adjust sometimes. Okay, now we're ready 
to press it and take a look at how this block looks. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and press the seams. And then I'm going to open them up and I'm going to press them towards, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to press these towards the center. So I'll get that to lie down. Of course you can press the seams the other direction too. <clears throat> Whichever works best for you. And there we have the square and points block. I also wanted to show you what four of those would look like next to each other. And I made four blocks and they're all different colors. So here we have So here we have four blocks of all different colors, which I think would be really cute for a kid's quilt. Um, but here we go. Here's what four of them look like together. Now this is another symmetrical block, so it's not going to matter which way you turn your stars or turn your blocks. It's, it's going to look the same. There's... Um, I mean, it, it's the same all the way around, and the center is the same, so it's not going to look any different. But this makes a very bold graphic uh, quilt, and um, I think you'd like that. So I hope you give this a try. So I hope you enjoyed this video on the square and points block. This is an eight-pointed star. It goes together pretty quickly. You just need to know how to make the flying geese units and there you've got it. Uh, this is an 8 inch block. I have instructions on my blog that you can download in a PDF format and it has instructions for the 8 inch as well as a 12 inch blocks if you prefer to do that. And I hope you'll check those out. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram at Sunrise Quilt Studio and if you like this video I hope you will click the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, don't forget to click that notification bell so that you can be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.